This is the NEC FS-80 2 and 80 centimeter SCART CRT TV. Very dark colored CRT tube. For a difference, the controls are on top. There's our buttons. Also looks like the television has a beefy sound system inside. Chromavision, NEC likes to call their TV range or some of their range Chromavision. Down here we have an input at the front, S-Video, that's the only S-Video that is available to the television. Status indicators and probably infrared receiver for the remote. Digital sensor, probably automatically adjust brightness and picture characteristics depending on the light outside the television. NEC badge, power on and off. Quite a bulky set, very filled out here to the corners. Moving down, there's our label with model number 110 to 240 volts, made in Korea, which gives us a little bit of a clue to as what this TV actually is. It is more so a different brand than an EC, but more on that later. I like that there's a cable tie there for the power lead. There's the back of the chassis on a lighter gray plastic that would be interchangeable depending perhaps on what region of the world it's going to. The all important SCART most likely doesn't take RGB. I've done another NEC video that has a SCART in the TV but does not accept RGB. We'll look into that more too. There's our other inputs that would appear to be inconspicuous. However, though we do have a blue RCA there and this ties into the yellow and the red for component input. Usually that yellow would be colored green, but it's yellow in this case, labeled DVDY there. So that's nice to have. RF, let's have a look inside. Up here at the top is something rather gimmicky. It looks like a sub with a speaker of some sort, but really it's just an outlet. It's just a grill. There is no, there is no speaker. There are no, there are no wires to it, so it's really an illusion. As far as the speakers are concerned, there are quite a number there on each side with three speakers there and three speakers on the other side as such. Our chassis, moderately sized chassis, and the tube is not totally surprising. However, it is labeled Daewoo, which gives away the brand of the TV. In fact, it is Daewoo, and that will be indicated in a service manual that I found and I'll show shortly. It is made by LG Philips, unsurprisingly, the big tube maker there in South Korea. Down at the flyback, we have two focus pots and a screen pot. Looking more closely at the SCART, nice that it can be removed separately. Unfortunately, pins seven 11 and 15 are not wired at all. They would normally contain the red, green and blue signals. They would carry the red, green and blue from whatever device is plugged into the SCAR socket to the television for processing or displaying, but they're not wired. So that socket does not take RGB. Television does not take RGB. All it's got really left is component that we will try shortly. At least you have a SCAR socket mount if you can modify the chassis to display rgb then at least you don't have to finick around with putting a scart into the back drilling cutting doing all that sort of thing this is the front cover of the television service manual primarily daewoo but you can see that it also applies to this model this nec here's a list of things that can be adjusted via the service menu mode However, to get into the service menu mode, it seems that you have to use a special remote control. This is called the SBC Remocon, Service Remote Control. Speaking of remotes, I don't have the regular remote for this TV. The manual shows many pictures of the remote, but does not state what model number it is. Right now, the pattern generator is hooked up in NTSC via S-Video. This television is somewhat tired. It's a bit dim, takes a little while to warm up, and it has a lot of waviness going on through the image right now. I don't know the history for the unit. It's probably been outdoors. Moving on, you're very wavy there. Might, camera might not pick it up. Even the screen's still a bit dirty. Didn't quite clean up as well as I had hoped. 
And there's our geometry. A bit crooked down the bottom there. A bit jittery that image indeed. Let's finally test the component video of the TV. Let's use a console. Okay, the PlayStation 2 is running via component into the television. While we're here, I'll show you the menu of the television. There's basic menu, picture with its adjustments, sound. Funny how you can tune in all these different ranges in the sound. It's unusual. Install to tune your channels in. Features. You can have a red screen when it's in standby. Off or blue. Zoom. Probably a volume control of some sort. Child lock. Clock demo. Picture in picture. Why is it that I never explore picture in picture? I wonder why. Not a real lot of features. Right now, I think we're in 240p. Yeah, we're in 240p over component, and that doesn't seem to be a problem. If we go to 480p, it'll do the old double screen trick. So it doesn't support progressive scan. That's not a surprise at all. Which makes me think the television will not be 100 hertz in any way. Now I've got to try and get back into something compatible. We'll go to 480i, and that is not a problem either. There we go. Um, in summary, I, this is certainly not the best example of this NEC TV, but I think even under best case scenario, it would be okay, but nothing special, nothing to look out for especially. I would rate it higher if the SCART supported RGB, at least it does have a component, but there's probably a lot of other televisions out there with component that aren't 100 hertz that you could get that would perform it equally as well or maybe better, maybe worse. But this particular one, eh, just middle of the road, nothing special. I'm glad it didn't go up in a puff of smoke, however, and we managed to get to the end of the video. Again, this is an old TV with uncertain history that could have been outdoors. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Stay tuned and watch out for more.